girlfriend, Emma. Emma was his first love, and as such, if Bob was honest with himself, his ideal for a girlfriend. He tried to convert his other girlfriends into becoming Emma clones. <laughs> tried to create the same in-jokes, repeat the same little tricks at weekend breaks. And unfortunately, none of them ever been wholly convincing until Jane. He loved Jane. Jane didn't know about Emma. To be honest, Jane didn't know herself. She'd been at Roth when going out with Darren, and had tried to be check off with Kafka when going out with Crispin. She had one very reason when on precious marches when seeing Mark and smoked masses of dope and listened to Floyd when going out with John. Now she was going out with Bob. And now she loved their in jokes, their little weekend breaks, and their quiet Sunday afternoon walks. She loved Bob. They stopped walking and stared into each other's eyes. Bob caressed Jane's cheek and tilted her head towards his hand. Then, almost crying with the sheer joy of it all, of being young, in love, and with the person you love, they kissed. A shrill, high-pitched scream split the air. Bob and Jane turned and saw two people, a man and a woman, screaming and running down the street away from them as fast as they could. As they rounded the corner to the next street, Bob and Jane could hear them shouting, It's horrible! It's horrible! Someone do something! Well, what's all that about? asked Jane, looking up at strong, manly Bob. I don't know, said Bob. Probably just jealous. They can't handle seeing true love. Maybe seeing us made them realise how shallow their own relationship was. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lovely thing to say, said Jane. But then again, Bob only ever said lovely things. They continued to stroll down the street, Bob savouring the hint of Jane's perfume over the aroma of cut grass. They stopped walking and kissed each other again. They really couldn't help themselves. Indeed, so engrossed were they that they didn't hear the tranquilizer dart whistle through the air. Bob and Jane fell to the ground as one, their lips still touching despite their own unconsciousness. When they awoke, the first thing they thought of was each other. They hugged. Are you alright? Are you sure? I don't know what I'd ever do if I lost you, they said as one. Die, probably, said a well-spoken but monotone voice from the other side of the darkened room. Who are you? asked Bob and Jane. Fascinating, said the man. Who are you? they repeated. Oh, please, excuse me, I'm forgetting myself. I'm Dr. Kokoschka and I'm overseeing your case. Our case? asked Bob. Yes, you see, it's really the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Well, what is, what do you mean? What do I, well, look at you. Bob looked at first himself, then Jane, her big brown eyes, her soft skin, her glossy hair that chose just that moment to flop over one of her eyes. He caught it into a perfume of the smell of antiseptic. And Jane looked first at himself, then Bob, his square jaw, the defined cheekbones, his broad shoulders, the tension in his muscles as he sat and ready to protect her. Bob and Jane shrugged their shoulders. What? Kokoschka, a lonely looking middle aged man who'd obviously never been in love, stood up behind his desk, his slick back hair reflecting the meagre light. What? I mean, what? Just look at you, are you blind? Love is blind, replied Bob. But you weren't born this way, asked Kokoschka. We were born to love each other, said Bob. But can't you see something rather unusual about the two of you? Well, yes, of course, said Jane. And what, pray tell, is that? No one loves each other as much as we do, she said. <laughs> Kokoschka sat down in his chair of leather and polished gold and stared at them, stroking back his hair with an open palm. He doesn't seem to quite understand. He stood up and pressed a switch, a square light the size of a cupboard glowing on the far wall. On this he placed a piece of black celluloid which Bob and Jane instantly recognised as an x-ray. Look here, he said, a complete merger of the cardiovascular and pulmonary systems. Two hearts beating as one, said Bob and Jane, looking into each other's eyes. One leg gone, joined into a composite limb. We'll always walk the same path, two destinies intertwined, said Bob. Jane thought rather romantically. <laughs> Three cerebral hemispheres, one completely merged, said Kokoschka, jabbing the x-ray. Well, that's one of the great things about being in love, said Jane, realising you have the same opinions and great to think like each other. But you're not individuals, screamed Kokoschka. You turned into some kind of flesh and blob. <laughs> Even your lungs are growing to each other. It's, it's, I love the air Bob breathes, said Jane. <laughs> but you have to be separated for your own good, said Kokoschka, putting the x-ray away from the wall. You can't live like this. What's the matter with you, said Bob? Have you never been in love? I bet he hasn't, whispered Jane. Rubbish, there's no such thing as love, it's just the encounter of two weaknesses. <laughs> Bob and Jane stood up, outraged at his suggestion. Kokoschka continued. How can anyone truly believe there's such a thing as romantic love? It demands the impossible, the absolute, the sky on fire, inexhaustible springtime, life after death and death itself transfigured into eternal life. He glared at them, exasperated. Bob and Jane looked into each other's eyes and they shrugged their shoulders. Yeah, so it's about right. I love you, Jane. I love you too, Bob. You have to be separated, said Kokoschka, taking the string from his desk, even if it must be done by force. No screamed Bob and Jane, lunging forward as the bob arm clenched its fist and laid Kokoschka out. 
The poor man, said Jane as they escaped the hospital. I feel so sorry for him not having anyone to love. Bob squeezed her hand tightly. That's why he loved Jane. She was always thinking of other people. Later that night, Bob and Jane lay snuggled up in bed, candles flickering in the corners of the room, the aroma of the oil burner filling the room despite the open window. What a strange day, said Jane as she crossed Bob's gut. How did the world become an ugly place that two people can't even be in love without everybody thinking it's strange and unnatural? That's because there's so many sad people in the world, said Bob. Jane kissed his chest, her soft palm moving down to his inner thigh, and her six-chambered heart missed a beat. She moved up to kiss him, Cartilage's skull and flexible thalamic tissue stretching as she did so. He caressed her waist and moved down, his callous hand passing over the three-socketed pelvic girdle and down the twisted calcified femur. She moved round on top of him, ligamental hinge in the pelvis closing, skin stretching, internal and external intercostal muscles extending on their ossified rib hinge. And she sat on him, te teasing him with her ears. Bob and Jane started to pant, three lungs filling with air, joint, joint bronchioles oxygenating the blood as it was punched from Bob's aorta through to Jane's iliac artery. Bob loved Jane so much he wanted to be a part of her, and he always felt frustrated that the simple sex never let him get as close to her, as into her, as he would like. He picked her up by her hips, shared carpet stretching as he did so, and a small gasp came from Bob and Jane's lips as a joint hypothalamus ordered siderific glands into activity, and Bob and Jane started to sweat. Good, thought Jane. I like it dirty. <laughs> Despite their shared brain, they didn't really know each other at all. Bob and Jane heaved and thrusted on the crisp warm sheets, and they looked into each other's eyes and smiled as they made the two back to beast. <laughs> for the first half folks so please come and enjoy yourself in the interval. <laughs>